And the Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, joins me now live from Melbourne. Treasurer, thanks for joining us tonight. The May budget assumed there would be no more extended lockdowns. The PM has today conceded that the largest economy in the country uh, will be an extended lockdown. What's going to be the economic impact? Look, it will be significant. Uh, obviously, you get border closures, you get supply chains d disruptions, you get investment decisions that are delayed. And when you get a, a state or parts of a state that are in lockdown, you get workers who, ca who can't turn up at the office or uh, turn up to, to their normal vocation. Um, this will have a significant impact on the economy and Treasury expect that the New South Wales lockdown is costing about $700 million a week. What will it mean in terms of job growth, in terms of employment growth figures, though? Well, we're getting some job numbers later this week. That won't take into account what's happened in New South Wales, Laura, but it will take into account what happened in Victoria with their shorter two-week lockdown. But the Australian economy, both on terms of economic growth but also in terms of the labour market outcomes, has surprised on the upside. Uh, we've seen unemployment go down to 5.1%, which is where it was last February. And Australia well, we've had heard those any before, advanced Treasurer. economies. Hmm. We've well, heard those figures important. before. Figures, Laura. Yes, they are important they are figures. Important but if figures. the biggest part of the economy is about to go into lockdown for a long period of time, the question is what impact is it going to have on growth? Well, no one's dismissing the significant impact it will have on confidence, on investment, uh, and then in terms of growth and, and even potentially labour market outcomes. But we'll just have to wait and see. As you did say in your introduction, we anticipated uh, in the budget that there would be further outbreaks and further lockdowns, but not of the lengthy duration we're now seeing in New South Wales. But we've responded today with a very significant support package in partnership with New South Wales. It's both a cash flow boost which directly supports businesses based on the size of their payroll, as well as extending the uh, individual payments to households, to workers, to $600 a week or to $375 a week, depending on the number of hours a week that has been lost. And the trend in the infection numbers in New South Wales is really terrible. Do these measures take mm. account of the fact that the New South Wales economy may, may go into an even bigger lockdown, a, a more fulsome lockdown? Well, these measures are in place for as long as those uh, extended restrictions remain. And I'm talking particularly about the designated hotspot areas that the Commonwealth uh, has maintained. When it was in, New in Victoria, we designated some areas that were hotspot areas, and so too we've done that in New South Wales. And our individual payments are based on those designated hotspot areas. So hopefully uh, the New South Wales health authorities can get on top of this outbreak uh, as soon as possible. But it does look like it's very challenging. But if the economy is put into effectively hibernation, we're back to where we were at the beginning of the pandemic when we had JobKeeper and a whole range of other supports, including things like rent relief. Mm. But the, uh, the New South Wales economy will not be getting that support this time round. Well, I think the economy is in a very different position than it was last year when we did announce JobKeeper, which of course was a nationwide program. The measures that we've announced uh, today are more targeted in the sense that they distinguish between states, they distinguish within states in terms of designated hotspot areas, as well as, uh, depending on the size of the business, uh, the amount of support to flow to them will be different. Uh, when we announced JobKeeper last year, Laura, uh, Treasury had told me that the national unemployment rate could reach as high as 15% with more than 2 million people unemployed. Today it's at 5.1% and it's come down even with the end of JobKeeper. So we've transitioned to a different phase. Well, it, it, we may have, but whose fault is this lockdown? You blamed Victoria and said uh, the Victorian government had to uh, take responsibility for the lockdowns there. Is this the New South Wales government's fault? Well, as you know, uh, you had a limo driver in, in New South Wales uh, that was carrying international crew and did not have a mask, uh, and that shouldn't have, have occurred. Uh, and uh, the New South Wales government has accepted that and they've changed the public health orders as a result, but that definitely should not have occurred. Uh, within, with respect to Victoria, it was a very different situation uh, last year. They weren't obviously dealing with the Delta variant. They had a massive hot, uh, quarantine failure. Then they had an inquiry that didn't find that anyone the took Treasurer, responsibility New, New South Wales or made is the deal, decision. Is dealing. 
New South Wales is dealing with the uh, Delta variant, which is much harder to uh, to deal with. If, yeah. uh, if the lockdown is extended because New South Wales didn't lock down harder earlier, isn't it it's, it's the fault of the state government, isn't it? Well, they're going to take their medical advice as to the nature of those restrictions. And as you know, um, they may take further uh, decisions in the coming weeks, depending on how successful they are in containing and contact testing and tracing uh, this outbreak as it occurs. They are decisions that they will take, but of course the New South Wales Government has done very well to date uh, in managing the virus. I mean, if you look at the national uh, average of the number of days lost to lockdown outside of Victoria, if you, if you take out the, the first initial lockdown, Treasurer, it's only around Treasurer 11 Premier. days in Victoria, it's 149 days. Treasurer, Premier, Premier Andrews has said to, tonight that your government's refusal to provide more assistance to it, the state, was a disgrace. Do the apparent double standards reflect the government's concern it may lose seats in New South Wales? Well, that's a very cynical question and the statement from Daniel Andrews, um, people are sick of his whinging and his politicking of the crisis. I mean, the reality is that any time anyone challenges Daniel Andrews, including your colleague Lee Sales, you get the bots and the trots uh, starting to troll her out of Trades Hall on social media. The reality is this. Uh, we have provided more support on a per capita basis to Victoria through JobKeeper than any other state. Victoria was offered a 50-50 split and they decided to reject that. The payments to New South Wales for the two, first two weeks that was experienced with the same lockdown in Victoria were exactly the same. And now we've put in place a system with New South Wales, with New South Wales that can be expend, extended and expanded to other states should they incur a lengthy lockdown. Aren't the current low vac vaccination rates a key reason New South Wales is facing an extended lockdown? And would you describe the vaccine rollout as a success? Well, the vaccine rollout has been very challenging. There are some things we can control and there are some things we can't control, like uh, the Atagi advice around uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine and the cohorts that it would be available to. I mean, I think the fact is that Australia on the health front uh, has avoided the fate of so many other nations. The average loss of life, Laura, across the OECD has been 30,000. Australia but were you too has had slow? tragically we but less than 1,000 alive. But were you too slow to adjust those vo uh, vaccine options? Should you have been talking to Pfizer globally? Well, we have been seeking to get as many vaccines as possible. The good news is uh, that we, as I understand it, will be getting a million vaccines a week uh, from Pfizer in, in, in a short period of time. Uh, we've already seen 9.3 million doses being delivered and distributed. We're focused on the more vulnerable cohorts like the over 70s where more than 70 per cent have received their first dose. More than a third of the eligible population have received their first dose. More vaccines are becoming available. General Fruin is overseeing Treasurer. the rollout and I'm confident that it will go the pace. Treasurer, we're out of time but thank you for your time tonight. All my best. All the best. Thank you.